Today we've got a very interesting opportunity to take a look at two very small bikes. The one behind me is Vic's bike, this is a size small, and the one at the front you can see here is a size extra small that we're currently in the process of building for a customer coming to collect it very soon. Now the reason I think this video is going to be interesting because there's quite a few intricacies deciding between an extra small and a small frame. It's not quite as simple as how tall are you, what sort of frame size you get, because quite a lot has to change when you go from a small down to an extra small. Now, the brand is irrelevant here. These happen to be Time Outdoors, but the geometry on these is very traditional, 73 degrees, 73 degrees, very classic road race geometry, but that doesn't necessarily hold true when you start getting into the smaller frames. You see, the problem we have here is we still need to try and fit two 700C wheels into this frame. And if we keep making everything smaller and smaller, these wheels are gonna get closer and closer together. And eventually this wheel will hit this frame. And if you had a set of cranks in here, your cranks would hit this wheel as well. You get that toe overlap, it'd be pretty dangerous to ride. So we have to try and do some really clever things with the geometry to try and get the bike to actually function. So it's actually difficult to say that the bike at the front here is even the same bike as the one behind because they are so fundamentally different. So let's take a look at some of the key differences between these frames and hopefully guide you as to how you might decide which of these frames, because you can see that they're very, very similar. Now, the very first thing is, is the standover height. This is the distance between your crutch and the ground. If you had to come off the pedals and stand above the bike, could you comfortably stand over the bike? And there is actually quite a big difference between these. There's actually about four centimeters. This is between the top tube here and your crutch. That might be one major pure safety concern. So after that, we have to think about the length and you can look at this in two ways, either the top tube length or the actual reach measured from the bottom bracket. And both of these bikes are actually very, very similar. In fact, if we take a look at the geometry chart here, the distance in reach is only five millimeters, which is next to nothing, especially when you consider that stems get measured by the centimeter. And that almost has to be the case because like I say, you have to try and have a sufficient wheelbase that the bike doesn't suddenly become really, really twitchy in handling, or you end up with toe overlap and all sorts of messy stuff going on. The other thing that can't really change that much is the height of the handlebars. I mean, this is where smaller riders really, really struggle because the saddle to bar drop, that is the distance between the saddle and the bar height here, isn't actually that extreme, which means that smaller riders really struggle to get into a really powerful riding position where they can really use their glutes to push hard on the pedals because the handlebars naturally have to be so high to accommodate the 700C wheel, the fork, enough of a head tube that the two tubes can actually join and then of course the stem height as well. So you're already restricted, even being completely slammed, you're already at a fairly high saddle to bar drop. One of the very first things you'll notice when you look at an extra small bike is this angle here seems so much further forward, what we would call slack. And that's in order to make sure this wheel has this space here that we were talking about earlier. Now this has loads of implications for the handling. And if I was just to take our inclometer and measure this, this actually gives us an angle of around 66 but combined with the angle here, gives us that 71 degrees, which is almost two degrees slacker than the 73 degree angle actually intended for this design of frame. So if I just lay this ruler up against here, it really exaggerates the angle that we're talking about. Now this is gonna have quite a big impact on how the bike handles. You see with a normal 73 degree angle, you expect to have that really tight cornering feel that you expect from a race bike. Throw it into a 90 degree bend, lean over, really nail that corner. In contrast, with something with a slack head angle like this, it's gonna handle much more like a mountain bike, which means that if you're rolling in a straight line and you hit a really rough potted road, this is actually gonna feel a lot more stable when you're going fast in a straight line. It's gonna feel like the wheel's gonna track over obstacles a whole lot better. But at slow speeds, it's gonna feel a little bit wobbly. So quite often choosing between a small frame and an extra small frame actually comes down to the handling characteristics and whether you want something that's gonna feel a bit more racy and nimble or whether you're doing more endurance rides and actually having a slack head angle more akin to an endurance bike is actually what you're looking for. That definitely happened in this case because this particular customer said, well, actually I spend a lot of, lot of time in the mountains and I really want to feel confident at speed descending steep hills, you know, in the rough roads. I said, this is, this is the one because your actual position will be able to get exactly the same between the two bikes but this one offers the best geometry for what you're uh, describing without having to go into an endurance bike. It gives a really, really nice compromise. I just want to reiterate the point that how difficult it can be to buy a really, really small bike. So this is the Geometry Geeks website, and I've just pulled up 
the two time bikes that we're looking and I've also pulled up the Giant TCX and the Giant Defy. Now, you guys often ask me why I always pick on Giant. Well, there's one simple reason. It's the biggest bike brand in the world. They're absolutely global. Everybody watching this video has heard of the Giant TCR and the Giant Defy. So it makes pretty good sense just to compare them to lots of different things. So this is the crazy thing about small geometry. Remember, the Giant Defy should be their endurance bike. And endurance bikes typically have a higher stack, a shorter reach, and also a slacker head angle would make it an endurance bike. But they don't do an extra small in the TCR or the Advance. You're stuck at a size small. So um, I've pulled up a size small here as well. And you can see that the actual, the Giant TCR actually has an 11 millimeter higher than the extra small. Now, most small riders actually have the opposite problem. They have the problem of trying to get the handlebars low enough rather than necessarily make them higher, like people in a size medium or a size large frame would do. And while we're on this top column here, the reach, this is what most people associate with going down in size, but you'll see that the reach is actually very, very similar because at some point you can only make a bike so short because you're stuck with you know the size of your feet the size of the crank the size of the wheels and you can't just keep making things smaller and smaller so compromises have to happen somewhere uh, and this is where the compromises normally happen is down here on the head angle and the seat angle and most of the time when you're looking at an extra small or a small bike you'll find that you're already riding what would essentially be endurance geometry for a person riding a medium or a large frame so when you see an endurance bike in a small size, that just gets exaggerated more and more and actually some really, really funky things start to happen. So you can see here on the giant Defy that the head angle actually gets steeper and that's because the wheelbase here has got significantly longer. Um, and they've done that by making the chain stays quite long as well. So by making the chain stays longer, you stabilize the handling at the back but you also take away some of the nimble cornering abilities as well. So it's not always a good thing just to keep th making things longer and longer. The point I'm trying to make is that when you're buying a small bike or an extra small bike, you've got to put way more thought into it than just does it fit because there are so many more handling characteristics that go on as brands try and squeeze in wheels and crank set into a smaller and smaller package. Now, when you're looking at the geometry chart of a bike that you might be interested in, you're gonna see this effect described under trail. And trail is the distance between where this white stick is interacting the ground. And if I turn my laser level on here, so what I've done here is moved our white ruler to the center of the steering axis. So it's taken a line here through the center of the steering axis. And this red line is demonstrating where our tire actually touches the ground. And the difference between these two marks here is what we call trail. Now on here, it's actually quite a long trail. It's almost seven centimeters, which again, almost puts you into mountain biking, time trial sort of territory where you need your front wheel to be very, very stable as it's hitting obstacles or you're in a more compromised position. It doesn't necessarily lend itself into nimble handling, i.e. throwing it into a corner and adjusting your weight position like you would do in a road bike race. Now, this is probably the biggest difference between these two frames, because looking at the geometry chart here, the size small has a trail of 61 millimeters compared to this one at 70. That's a nine millimeter difference. Now, compared to that small on the medium and the large, which were designed around a 58, and therefore only a three millimeter difference, the jump between a small and an extra small when it comes to that trail measurement is absolutely massive. So there's one more thing to consider while we're up in this area, and that is with this slacker head angle, we also have the problem that our stems don't come in at an angle that corresponds. You normally, the stems come with a six or a seven degree angle to correspond to the 73 degree angle of our steering, which means that we get this nice straight angle. With this being slacker, it now means that our stem now has a slight positive angle, which means that our handlebars are higher, which again is that problem that we have with smaller people not being able to get the saddle to bar drop. So you can actually get stems which are a more of a negative rise. Maybe it comes down to a, a minus 10, a minus 12, even minus 20. However, if your handlebars start to go below this bearing with a really negative stem, then you have other handling considerations to think about as well. You don't tend to see this that much, maybe on a few time trialists, maybe you sometimes see it on a World Cup cross country type bike, but for most road bikers, they tend to keep the handlebars at least level um, with the top bearing. One more important note about stem length with this. If you really are struggling with the actual overall reach and you need your handlebars to be that much closer to you, 
if you put a very, very short stem on a very slack head angle bike, you're gonna get some very funky handling indeed. So sometimes, if you've got the stand over height to do it, you're better off putting a shorter stem on a bike with a more normal head angle than you are putting a short stem on a very slack head angle bike and then try to keep the handling somewhat under control, especially if you're also running narrow bars. Because if you have a narrow 38 or 36 centimeter bar and a very short stem and a very slack head angle, you're gonna have absolutely disastrous and scary as hell handling. It won't be a cool ride. Okay, the other thing that needs to change on extra small frames is this. This is the seat angle here. Now, in order to accommodate the rear wheel and make sure that our center of gravity stays somewhat over the bottom bracket, we normally see these get a little bit steeper into a 74, maybe even a 75 degree angle, which means that as you come further forward, your hip angle is naturally going to open. Now, you can offset that by then trying to lower your handlebars even further, which you'll often struggle to do like we've just talked about. So you've sometimes got a problem that's a little bit compounded. But what you might find is that by moving this slightly forward, opening that hip, you can actually probably run a longer stem than you think you can and actually put some control back into your steering with an extra small bike. So for example, this particular customer came to us with a Bianchi that they'd heavily modified to try and get it to fit. And they came with a very, very short stem and their saddle was pushed all the way to the front of the rails. And actually when we measured them, we thought we can get a better geometry setup for what you want with the extra small than the small, even though we could get the contact points in the same place with both these bikes. What this meant was that we could run that slacker head angle. I could run a slightly longer stem to control that handling again and we could give them the hip angle they wanted as well. So the extra small made absolute perfect sense. It means we can completely slam this as well and try and our best to get a really good saddle to bar drop. In fact, I think we might even change this stem and try and go a little bit lower, but we're gonna find that out when they come for their bike fit. Okay, and the very last thing, and a bit of a word of warning, as you can see, the distance between the bottom bracket and the wheel gets very, very shortened. So, so if you're buying these off the shelf a few years ago, this would come with a normal 172.5 millimeter crank um, and you'd get all sorts of toe overlap problems. And that's when your wheel uh, turns here and actually the toe of your shoe will be hitting. It's absolutely terrified if it ever happens to you. But at least for the last five or six years, you'll find that nearly every brand has got on top of this and are now starting to provide shorter cranks. But if you are home building, the best thing to do is just go for the shortest cranks you could possibly find and avoid any sort of situation where that toe overlap is likely to happen. Top tips if you are buying a small or an extra small bike, first of all, get the stand over height right because that might be your limiting choice and everything else I've talked about in this video is completely irrelevant. So, so long as you can stand over safely a size small or a size extra small, then you can start thinking about the other considerations. So number two, we've learned that the reach is fairly irrelevant but if you're trying to make something shorter, you might be better off going for a size small frame because the handling will be less affected by reducing the stem length and your handlebar width. If, however, you can ride a longer stem, you'd be better off going for the slacker head angles that you'll normally find on the extra small frames. Tip three, if you are in the fortunate position that you could ride either frame quite happily, then really make sure you pay attention to the geometry and really understand the characteristics found in head angle and seat angle and choose a bike that's going to match the type of riding that you do in terms of its handling and ride feel. And the last thing, really pay attention to that potential of a toe overlap. Just make sure that you give yourself at least four centimeters probably between the pedal and the wheel and you should be good. Okay, I hope you found that video somewhat useful. If you did, please get down in the comments and let me know, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you on the next one.